This is Lenny Tweeden. I'm with the Martin County Historical Society. Today we're doing a special edition of Our Story, Making a Difference. I've got Peter Gorton. He's a communications consultant. He's founder of the John Donaldson Network. And uh, he's going to give a presentation here at the Pioneer Museum on Monday, April 10th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. So with that, I'd like to get started with Peter. And uh, Okay, John Donaldson. Who's John Donaldson? What's the John Donaldson Network? What can you tell us about him? And what's the picture here? Um, well, thanks for having me to Martin County Historical Society. I appreciate um, being able to tell John Donaldson's story. The important thing that we need to do is tell his story as many times as we can because it has truly been forgotten by history. John Donaldson was a great left-handed pitcher um, before the start of the Negro Leagues and through the Negro Leagues who actually played here in Fairmont. Okay. Um, and this is a picture of John Donaldson's All-Stars from 1932 um, when they played out at Hans Park. Why are you interested in this, or what what prompted you to get interested in the John Donaldson Network, and John Donaldson for that matter? I started looking into John Donaldson because he was a historically significant figure. He had a uh, virtually lost baseball career, and when I started figuring out that John Donaldson's career was spread over 25 states, um, we needed to start the John Donaldson Network, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, started with a letter-writing campaign, um, moved on to email and listserv so that we can try and procure games that he played in in 25 different states. He played over 2,000 baseball games, and our sole mission was to go figure out where those games were played um, and try and come up with um, an analysis of his career based on the number of games he played in. And in order to do that, I couldn't travel to 25 states, mm -hmm. so I had to talk to lots of different people. And so I put together this huge network of people who could go to their hometown and figure out what John Donaldson did in their hometown. So we'd have somebody in the middle of Nebraska or southern <clears> Minnesota <throat> who would mail in a newspaper article that John Donaldson was mentioned in. Hmm. Um, and what ended up happening was we ended up having about 600 people mail in things that said something about John Donaldson. And what happened was we found one of the greatest black baseball players in the history of baseball. So is that the John Donaldson Network then? All these people working together yeah. to accomplish this? Right, yeah. So what we would have is we'd have a, um, a strange game that we had heard from some source that it was in the middle of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And then I'd find somebody in the middle of Nebraska to go to their local uh, uh, newspaper office and find the game and mail right. it into me. And so I started with letters and then I started emailing people and people just started mailing me stuff. And what ended up happening was we found over 400 wins which is the most of any black pitcher in the history of segregated baseball um, for John Donaldson. And over, we were able to document over 5,000 strikeouts, um, which is more documented strikeouts for sure than any black pitcher ever. What's, what's the end result then? What do, you, what do you hope to accomplish? My main goal was legacy restoration, right? How do we not know who John Donaldson is today. Mm -hmm. um, my idea is to try and get as many people to remember him as possible and to rebuild his legacy um, by using all the information that we have about him. Somewhere around 5,500 newspaper articles mention John Donaldson in them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of newspaper to have for somebody who's completely forgotten. He played for 33 seasons for 25 different teams. Uh, because he was segregated from baseball he could, because of the color line, he couldn't play in the major leagues. And so it's very important to have somebody track that down, and I was lucky enough to be able to have the opportunity and able to put all the things together in order to realize that, heck, this guy is one of the greatest ever. So he played until about how old was he when he, when he was no longer um, playing? That was the funny thing. They, nobody really knew. Mm -hmm. um, we have subsequently figured out what his age was, but um, there were lots of rumors that he was much older than he was mm -hmm. um, because they were trying to draw crowds. They always called him Old John Donaldson in 1932 when he was here. Uh, but he played for, uh, he started in 1908 and finished in 1940, and he was born in 1891, and so he played 33 seasons. And then he went on to um, become the first black scout in the history of Major League Baseball for the Chicago White Sox. Really? He was out, yeah, he was out trying to find um, other black stars to bring to the Major Leagues. Uh, started in 1949 and mm -hmm. finished in 1953. The, um, and he scouted all the greats, Ernie Banks, um, Henry Aaron, mm. um, all the great players of that time period. Um, and so he was a significant figure. And what keeps coming up in this conversation is how does everybody forget who he was? Um, 
I have lots of information. I've been able to find it. Now we need to tell his story. And so what I like to do is go around and include, and you were included in the Dallas Network. You answered my letter um, okay. 15 years ago um, about seeking more information about oh, him. That was accurate. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was very important. And it's just another example of how um, it isn't me that's talking about him. Um, I was just able to start to put him together. For years and years and years, there's always been somebody who always talked about him, but mm -hmm. we seem to have collectively forgotten. And so it's it's really important that we are able to amass all this research and then try and figure out how significant he was. Um, it turns out he's one of the greatest ever. How do you think it compared to today's athletes, baseball players? Um, well, it's a no. It's, it, it, it's hard to compare, I know, but it's it's very difficult. But that's a part of baseball. Mm -hmm. Part of baseball is statistical analysis. Part of baseball is um, comparing one generation to the next. Sure. I can tell you he finished, he started and finished 92% of his games. Nine full innings. That's it, more than uh, the five innings they go now. Right. And so my point is it, it, um, in 1914, he threw as many innings that we have found as the top major leaguers in terms of nine innings, three outs per inning. Um the leaders of the, all the different major leagues at that time, what, he pitched more innings than What's the most interesting or astounding thing you found in your research about John Donaldson? Um, the one, if you could point to one thing. The one thing that's most astounding about it is how we forgot. Mm -hmm. How could somebody be so popular? Everywhere I go, there are things written down about him. Everywhere I go, there are stories about him from, uh, you know, histories of counties from uh, all the way along, but no one now mm -hmm. knew who he was until we were able to put everything together. And that's really the key. Um, they wanted to put him in the Baseball Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in 1972, shortly after Satchel Paige was the first black player ever in the Hall of Fame. His friends couldn't find his career. And they're quoted in the newspaper going, we don't know where his Career so you is. You basically had to go through the newspapers. Right. And, and so anybody 19... Anybody give research. Right. And so what we were able to do the last 16 years I've been working on this, every single day I do something to make sure that we keep his legacy moving along. Sure. Um, and so what we've been able to do in the modern age is be able to um, put all the pieces together, okay. which they couldn't do in the 1970s. You couldn't travel to the 550 cities that he played in and put all his information together. Now I can send an email to somebody or, and it and can come it. right back to me. Good. And that's the difference. Okay, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Destination Small Town, a KLUK-TV production. The challenge to share what's happening in small towns of the Midwest. The stories are real. The pace is swift with tourists, celebrities, and reporters from Sweet Swine County covering stories about businesses and points of interest. Destination Small Town, in living color on the web. Oh, we're back again uh, talking to Peter Gordon, and I guess one of the questions I uh, would like to find out a little bit more about is uh, John Donaldson personally. What was he like? What can you tell us about him as a person? Uh, I can tell you that he traveled a lot. That was part Obviously. of his job. Yeah. Um, we know lots of information about who he was. He was... Um, he did not smoke, drink, or curse, which was rare for baseball players back then. Um, <laughs> Chew, so he, he was either. He, yeah, and he was <laughs> renowned for that, for clean living mm -hmm. habits. Yeah. Um, we know that he was a walker. We have information that say that he would get off the train or out of his car or wherever they were going to, and he'd walk. And that's how he maintained his physical fitness. Mm -hmm. So he was able to have a 33-year career. Oh, based yeah, on yeah, yeah all the how he took he care of himself, and so we know lots of information about that. Um, and they didn't at that time. They didn't have trainers, you know, taking care of the arms. Of the no, that was all. relatively a thing after his his time. Now sure. we're talking about a, a baseball career that was from 1908 to 1940, mm -hmm. and so lots of technological advancements happened between there. They went from trains to cars, which would change your durability. Sure. Um, but the the important thing to remember is that he walked it off. Everywhere he went, he would go and walk around America. And if he, he played 2,000 games in 550 cities in 25 states, he saw a lot of America. How, and that's how, really how interesting, he, personal part of it. What kind of money did he make? How did he get paid? Um, he was paid, uh, he went to the highest bidder. 
Um, and that was one really the interesting part about it. What do you mean his, the highest bidder? The, high, well, the team that much like we have today in free agency, when a player reaches a certain contract status, they can negotiate with multiple teams for how much money their compensation is. These right? are different black baseball teams? Uh, yes. John Donaldson was um, desired by um, not only black baseball teams, but white baseball teams all over who were looking to have a payday. He was almost a guarantee of a 1,000 customers. Hmm. Um, and that was big for their town. Um, he came to um, central Minnesota and even Lismore in southern Minnesota because he could advertise the town. Okay, what, what's the Fairmont connection then? Um, Fairmont, 1932, um, he brought a team of black players that were primarily like uh, going to be Kansas City Monarchs, which was in the okay. Negro League. Sure. So he brought a, a collection of younger players and older players to Fairmont uh, to start a... They were going to build lights out at Hans Park, hmm. um, and he was to lease the baseball park for the game. Um, and so he brought a bunch of players up here in early 1932 um, and started the season there. But that was right in the middle of the Great Depression. And so the he ended up taking the team back on the road, which is what happened. Okay. Um, so he started here in Fairmont, played several games here, and then because of financial circumstances, they needed to go back on the road. Yeah. But I can tell you that, it, it, right back into your last question, advertised John Donaldson game and anywhere around here would bring thousands of people. Okay. And that's the thing. And so John Donaldson came to Fairmont, and that was for this town. And this picture is a picture of Donaldson's team when they were at Hans Park. Right. Yep, 1932. It's a very important thing to remember that he was not only mentoring young ball players who would go on to Negro League careers, mm -hmm. um, he was obviously in the latter stages of his career. He ended up playing in almost 10 more years after yeah. that. Yeah. But everybody in the newspaper always thought he was just about done. Sure. Um, but because he took such great care of himself, he um, uh, was able to have a, a tremendously long career. And at, at one time, he was considered the highest paid black baseball player in the United States. Right. Okay, presentations on April 10th. What, yes. What do you plan to do? What's your presentation going to be about? Uh, what are you going to have that would be of interest to people, especially baseball, people that are interested in baseball? Well, the great part about um, the presentation at the Martin County Historical Society, we're going to get two of them, right. two in the afternoon and seven. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give a general idea of who John Donaldson was. I'm going to be able to tell you lots of different things. I'm going to be able to show you film footage of him throwing a baseball, which Good. is, yeah, which be is very is incredible in itself. Uh, but I'm going to give you a, a good rundown of who he was. First of all, Negro League baseball players were major leaguers. Mm -hmm. um, not all of them, but some of them would have played in the major leagues had the color line not been there. Sure. Second of all, John Donaldson was known as the greatest colored pitcher in the world. Um, so I'm going to show you lots of different examples of why he was. Um, and the third part that I'm going to talk about specifically is legacy restoration. Um, it's awfully important to me that we don't take their legacy again. The color line didn't allow John Donaldson to be able to have the legacy of, of Christy Mathewson or Lefty Grove or pitchers that we know today. Exactly. He would have had that opportunity had the color line not taken his opportunity to have a legacy. What I want to be able to show people is we'll take his legacy away again by saying he wasn't significant. Um, and but he we, was significant. And he, t he was incredibly significant to many different areas of baseball in general. So the three things I'm going to talk about are how he was a major leaguer. The second thing is about how he was the greatest colored pitcher in the world at his, in his time. And the third thing was don't rob him of his legacy just because you don't know who he is. My job coming to Fairmont on uh, to do the two speeches is going to be to tell people why his legacy is important. Great. Looking forward to it. This is Lenny Tweeden for our story, Making a Difference, and we hope to see you on April 10th at either 2 in the afternoon or 7 in the evening at the Martin County Historical Society for the presentation on John Donaldson.